those messages. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'm really excited to host this community conversations today. I love a good resource roundup. So I'm really thrilled to be able to go through all of this information with you. Um, this is um, our July community conversation. As a reminder, they are um, once every two months. So we have six in a year. This, and we're getting close to, we just have two more left for the end of the year. Let's see. So we have one coming up on September 26th. Um, sorry, Sarah, would you mind muting everybody just to make sure we don't have background noise? Um, so we have one on September 26th, uh, where our folks will be talking about tax credits and insurance subsidy programs. And then we have one on November 21st, which is in honor of National Rural Health Day. Um, and I misspelled that, so I'm really sorry about that. But we, um, that one is always a fun one to attend. So I hope to see you at both of these. Um, these are also recorded, um, just a heads up. So this session will be recorded. We'll be posting this to the um, Community Conversation website, which I'll be sharing with you guys in a, in a few minutes. Um, and the slides will also be available. In fact, today's slides I already put up on a public link, which I'm putting into the chat right now. Um, because they're full of links, um, so I want to make sure everyone has access to those links um, as we're going through the presentation. Um, so you can kind of explore those things on your own. I'll be clicking on a few and sort of pulling up websites as we go just to show you what it looks like, but I want to make sure you have uh, full access. So um, we'll be posting this link uh, throughout the session just so newcomers can have access to it too, in case folks come in a little bit late. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in terms of the agenda, um, we'll be uh, going over just some announcements and then we're going to go straight into the resources. Um, and then I want to really focus on opening up the discussion um, and the floor for folks to share resources that you commonly use in your practice. Um, part of the intention of this is really bringing everyone's commonly used resources and part organizations that you partner with um, and different opportunities so that we can all learn and share with each other. Um, this um, our presentation that I put together today is really pulling from everyone in our, in the Oregon Office of Rural Health in our office to, I ask them to please like provide a list of resources from our own organization that we would like to compile in an easily accessible way in this presentation for all of you and also resources that you common refer folks to um, so we can all have it in one place. And that being said, I'm not necessarily uh, an expert in all of the resources that my colleagues shared with me today, um, which is why you'll see a little bit later on when we're going through the slides, I refer you to the person in our office who is the subject matter expert for each of the pages. So while I encourage questions, um, I'm just giving you a warning right now that I don't, I'm not the expert on all of these resources, but. I really just wanted to take the time to take to compile them for you to have access to and then um, have the person in our office who you can speak to you if you have further questions. So um, for the newcomers, I put the slides in the chat so you can have access to the presentation as we go along because it's chock full of links. So um, I want you to be able to, to use those as we go through today. So, um, just 1 big announcement for today, our um, annual conference is coming up. The 41st annual Oregon rural health conference is going to be held in Bend October 2nd through the 4th of this year. Um, registration is open. We have an agenda posted to the website um, and there's the link here, which um, you'll be able to access on that link that I put in the chat so you can. Take a look. Um, all of the information that you need is here. You can register right here and we really hope to see all of you there. 
Um, Laura Potter is the person to contact if you have any questions about the conference. And um, she's also in, in this room. So if anyone has questions, um, she'll be able to answer those. That's her. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Okay, so like I said, I know we have like a bunch of people coming in. I just want to give the disclaimer that um, this. Um, sorry, I'm distracted by the chat. This presentation is a compilation of resources throughout the Oregon Office of Rural Health, throughout the resources that we have, as an office have to offer to you, um, our rural partners and rural communities and rural um, hospitals and clinics. And then also resources that we commonly refer folks to. Um, so this is by, not by any means um, a fully encompassing document, but really just a cursory way of saying, here's a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of resources that we have to share with you. And also I hope to build off of this um, starting right here. Um, to be able to create a sort of resource library that's more fully encompassing um, of the resources in Oregon for rural folks. And that being said, um, like I mentioned, I am not the subject matter expert in all of these resources. So I invite questions um, and also I might not have the answers. Um, we have subject matter experts throughout our office on various topics, which I'll refer you to in the slides. Um, so we can, so just keep that in mind and as we go along. Oops. Okay. All right, resources, let's go. So the first um, slide, I just really wanted to talk about some of the central resources for rural health. Um, that is really the backbone of the work that our office does. These are our national partners um, and also they are great partners for rural hospitals, clinics, CBOs, public health. So we have, well, first, okay, us, I listed us first. Um, uh, just a reminder to, um, if you haven't already, our newsletter and our social media is a really great resource. Um, we post a lot. We post a lot from our partners. We post a lot of funding opportunities. We post a lot of events, trainings, um, policy updates. So, so that is really honestly a, a great resource. Um, when we want to get the word out about something, we always put it to social media. Um, and thank you, Sarah. The slides, um, you can follow along in the slides that Sarah posted um, as well. So you can click on these links um, directly. And then we have the National Rural Health Association, another national partner. Um, they are a great resource for policy updates. Um, they advocate for rural health on a federal level. They help states um, with policy education and training. Um, they are a great, place to learn more. They do um, rural health, they re like have research and publications and policy papers on rural health issues um, and also networking opportunities as well. Um, the Rural Health Information Hub, RHI Hub, it's the national clearinghouse for rural health issues. Um, I really recommend subscribing to their newsletter. Honestly, such a great resource. Um, they do so much to support rural communities across the states. Um, and this is what their um, website looks like. So I'll be kind of clicking on some links, showing you what it looks like. Um, as you can see, they have topic guides, state guides, rural data visualizations, like a ton of really great resources. They also have the MI Rural tool, um, which is helpful for locations that might be um, you know, outside of a city, but may not be qualifying as rural depending on one definition versus another. So if you're applying to a grant and you're not sure if you qualify as a rural community, um, this tool is really helpful. They go through all the different definitions of rural and they will look up your location. Um, and then we have the National Associ Association of Rural Health Clinics. Um, they do an incredible job um, with education and advocacy for rural health clinics. They also have a rural health clinic certification program. Um, we have the National Rural Health Resource Center. 
who provides technical assistance, information, tools, and resources for rural health. Um, and then we have the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy, um, which, you know, is a great partner and, uh, you know, where we get much of our federal funding through FORP, and they're a part of HRSA. Um, so if you want to learn more about programs, policy, and funding at the federal level, um, I would also look at their website and subscribe to um, their listserv as well. Oops. Ah. Um, I also just want to say the past com community conversations are also a really good place to learn more about our programs. These events are recorded and the slides are up uploaded, like I mentioned. Um, these are some of the past topics that we've covered over the last year and a half that we've been doing these. And each of these, we're really inviting um, ORH staff members to share about their programs and the resources that you know, we have to offer and answer any questions. Our office really does a very wide array of programs and support for rural communities and workforce. So if you have questions, if you wanna just learn more um, about a certain given topic, you can, um, you know, watch the recording or look at the slides. So that is also a great resource. Oh, I love that people are posting more resources in the chat. Um, I will also say that um, I'm going to go through a lot of these slides and then at the end, I want to open up the floor for folks to unmute and um, go on video if you want and share about resources that you use um, and want to talk about too. Okay. Um, so, ORH um, has a ton of um, maps and publications. Um, and data to share with you all. Um, this is uh, sort of the bulk of that in different categories. Um, although there, there is more like this data and publication section, there's a lot going on in there. There's a lot of really great information um, and resources. So um, we have our maps, I'll show you. We have the areas of unmet healthcare need maps. As you can see, there's, we have demographics, this is really, I mean, a great place to um, take a look if you're applying for a grant, if you're um, wanting data on the community that you serve. We also do service area profiles. Um, so you can ask Emerson, our, our data person, um, to for information about your specific community, um, and he will draw that up for you. So um, uh, yeah, it's just a really great, place for information. We also have Tableau maps on a sort of a different um, site. So the CDC places for Oregon, we have causes of death by service area. We have the census data looking at RHC. So really, uh, you know, a ton of great information. These are all um, interactive, I believe, with my internet. So you'll be able to, um, look at different uh, measures and see um, what it says. So yeah, great information, really interactive. Um, you'll, a lot of great information. Okay, I said that. Um, we, we have rural definitions, we have healthcare need designations, and then our data and publication section. Um, that is what that is, okay. And then a lot of different resources here. This is the service area profile. And I know Emerson did a more in-depth uh, community conversation on this too. So you can um, look at those slides and listen to that and also contact him if you have any questions about any of these things. Um, I also included some other resources that um, I've referred folks to um, that are Oregon specific. Um, this is a great resource, the SHARE Northwest data for rural health equity. Um, we have OHA data, we have county health rankings and roadmaps for Oregon, Oregon by the numbers, by the, fa the Ford Family Foundation, and then RHI Hub, which I shared earlier, also has state guides. And so here's the Oregon state guide. Um, here is a compilation of the workforce um, resources for loan repayment and tax credits. 
I am not going to go into this super in depth because this is not my area of expertise, but um, these are all really great resources on the different um, loan repayment programs and tax credit programs that our office um, uh, leads um, the programs on <laughs> um, and also other resources um, outside of our office for loan repayment and tax credits and loan forgiveness. Similarly, um, here are our sites for workforce recruitment. We have pages for that are aimed for the workforce, the healthcare providers. Um, and then we have a page for employers, a page for students, and, and a page looking at what life and practice is like in rural Oregon for um, prospective um, healthcare providers. We also partner with 3RNet, which is a resource for health professionals seeking careers in rural and underserved communities. Um, and I also wanted to list the Oregon AHEC on here as a great resource for education and workforce development um, to increase the rural workforce. Also a great resource. I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, but it's hard. <laughs> um, we have resources for rural hospitals. Um, this is some of the resources that our office provides are on these. Sites, so you can take a look at the amazing programs that Stacy has built over the years. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, I don't feel like I need to go into all of these super in depth. Um, I think that it's a, it's, you know, for you to sort of look through and see what speaks to you and what is relevant to you and your organization. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking. Um, we have technical assistance resources. I added the Oregon Echo Network as a great resource. We have our quality page, which this is also if you have any questions around this, Stacy Rothwells. The person to contact is the experts in our office around quality. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, so you can follow along in the slides that are um, publicly available on that link. Um, some of our resources around for rural health clinics um, and Rondi Ann Gerst is the person in our office who um, is a subject matter experts around rural health clinics. So she is the person to go to if you have any questions about this information. We have, um, we provide programs and technical assistance around Becoming an RHC, um, completing the Medicare cost report, enrolling in Medicaid, billing and coding certification. And then there's also an on demand library of past RHC related webinars. Um, Rondian also puts out an amazing newsletter um, for RHCs, and I highly recommend subscribing to her newsletter if you're not already. Um, we, and I mentioned them earlier, the National Association of Rural Health Clinics. Um, Rondi Ann listed some areas, um, some offerings that they have as well. Um, RHI Hub, there's a little, there's some overlap just because some of these organizations really are multifaceted and serve a lot of different areas um, for rural health. So RHI Hub, amazing, like I mentioned earlier, definitely sign up for their newsletter. Um, then we have Rural Health Clinic Center and again, the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. Um, and then just some more regularly used resources. Um, I'm not gonna go into these because I'm not an expert on them again, but um, Rondi Ann asked that I include some of these regularly used resources for rural health clinics. So I hope that they're helpful for you. And if you have any questions about that, um, definitely reach out to Rondi Ann. Okay, now I actually do know more about this section. So population health resources. Um, we, as many of you know, are really building out our population health programs um, at the Oregon Office of Rural Health. And some of the, the major programs that we have to offer are the Forum on Rural Population Health and Health Equity, which just happened in June, and it will be um, happening next year, May 19th through 21st in Seaside, Oregon. 
So this is a really, a really, it was a great event. It's new. Um, and I hope to see you all there. We had some really amazing speakers. Some of you um, spoke there and I, um, we have the slides posted to the website if you're curious about um, the kinds of topics that we covered. We also this year launched the Rural Population Health Incubator Program, which um, gives out $10,000 grants to organizations um, initiating or sustaining population health programs. The next cycle will be um, released in early 2025, so be on the lookout for that. Um, and if you, you know, want to be kept in the know about when these things are launching, definitely sign up for our newsletter. We put all of that information out on the newsletter and social media, so that will be um, really pivotal to to stay up to date when these programs are launching and when the RFPs are going out. Um, then we also have a population health resources page, because you know I love resources, and we have a lot of the um, like our or ORH specific um, programs. We have a population health webinar series that we did last year, where you can watch the recordings and look at the slides. Um, and the other the programs that I just mentioned, the areas of unmet health care need report, which I know a lot of you are familiar with. Um, and I added some readings and resources. We have some data, which most of this we talked about already, Project Echo. Um, so it mimics some of the slides that I'm sharing with you today. Um, but I think this is a great resource and I'm I am um wanting to not only just keep this updated, but find uh, another way of sharing resources and keeping it up to date um, and sharing the things that you all put in the chat. So stay on the lookout for that. Um, we also have a page on telehealth and broadband. Um, so this is just some other resources that you can use to stay up to date on those topics. The Center for Connected Health Policy is amazing for telehealth um, policy updates and also state specific. So they're they're national, but they have state specific um, information on telehealth. So this is honestly a great resource. And um, the NRTRC is amazing. Um, they are region specific, so they have um, a few, I don't know how many states they cover, but it's um, our region is under NRTRC. Um, and that's led by Jolene and Nikki, and they're incredibly knowledgeable and really helpful. So if you have any questions around telehealth, they truly are um, the people to go to. And they also have a telehealth map um, of Oregon and uh, um, the states in their region. That's like very all encompassing and really helpful too. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the, <laughs> I would really recommend folks, um, sign up for the Oregon broadband office. Um, it's not a newsletter, but it's their listserv, um, to keep up to date. Broadband policy and infrastructure is moving really fast right now, um, in Oregon and. I would love to see more folks um, participating in those conversations and getting involved with the rollout of the broadband infrastructure funding, the massive funding that um, we are seeing through the Infrastructure and Jobs Act. Um, so that I, yeah, just if you have any questions about that too, um, contact me. Um, let's see, let's go back here. Um, and I already mentioned we have, we did a 6 session series last year um, before we launched the new population health forum. So, um, a 6 sessions around population health, we had population health 101, digging into community health data, um, a session on community health workers, a session around strategic partnerships, a session featuring some of our grantees who spoke about building their programs. Um, and then a session that we really just heard from the audience about um, the kinds of issues that you were, that folks were coming up against and the different challenges and barriers, but also successes and learning. So 
this was a really great, I think, helpful beginning to the conversation of population health um, in terms of the kinds of dialogue that we're having as an office with our community partners. So um, take a look at that. And again, um, if you have any questions around any of these things, oops, um, definitely feel free to contact me. Okay. I also have a list of other resources that I thought were cool and that have really been helpful to me in my understanding of population health and, and in doing this work. So I don't necessarily want to go through all of these, um, but I love all of these. So if you guys, I would be so happy if folks took a look at these and, and let me know what you think. Um, a lot of really great resources. And a lot of great resources from um, organizations that I've already mentioned, like um, the National Rural Health Resource Center um, and others. So definitely take a look um, at all of this. And then this is my last slide. Um, it's kind of building into the conversation that I want to open up the floor. There's so many great resources. We've worked a ton with H+. We, you know, shout out to Shared Future Oregon, AARP Oregon, um, thinking about building um, partnerships and what that looks like, communications within a rural context. I wanted to include the Northwest Panda Pans Network as an example of, you know, organizations doing specific sp work around specific health conditions in rural. Um, so all of these things, I really, you know, am very interested to hear from all of you about the kinds of resources that you have utilized in your work that you would recommend to other folks in a rural context um and also just curious to see you know how this lands with you and um and what you'd like to see moving forward in terms of sharing of resources and this conversation so i'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and open it up to all of you, and I know there's a lot of messages in the chat, and I don't know if I can be up to date on all of them in this moment. So if you want to unmute and share your your comments, that would be great. So resources that you could potentially add to this list that you think folks should know about. Maybe okay, I guess I'll jump on. Greg, go first. You beat me. <laughs> um, um, I, I, this is the first time here. This that was one of the best overviews of the resources available that I've I've ever heard. Thank you very much. Wow. Um, the uh, I'm a native of Oregon, and I work for right now for a, uh, a nonprofit on lupus and other rheumatological conditions that um, uh, we've been working with rheumatologists. We do patient advocacy and education, basically. And so I'm really interested in finding partnerships and funding for programs where we create um, educational materials and videos specific to rheumatology, because that's such a relatively focused with uh, part of healthcare with such a specialized group of people that have very difficult times with pharmacies, rare disease, uh, all sorts of things. And so we're trying to um, go outside of the main group of folks that we've had around the Portland area to expand to all of Oregon. So, uh, I really appreciate that. And I'd love to hear from anybody who has interest in that. Great. Thank you, Thank you Greg. And if I'm looking off to the side, I'm t uh, typing notes and I want to, you know, make sure everyone's voices are heard so I can put all of this out uh, to everyone after the session too. So we can keep thinking about this and we can connect later on too. And William, did you want to share? Sure, yeah. So um, I dropped several things into the chat. Um, they created a new position across the VA to better uh, sort of integrate community care and the connection between clinical services and community-based models. So they hired what they call uh, CEPCs, it's a long name, Community Engagement and Partnership Coordinators. And I took that job in January after about 14 years as a PTSD therapist with VA. 
Um, one of the things that's important to highlight is that the rural communities right now, what I'm seeing as I've traveled the last six months across, especially the catchment area of Roseburg, is aging populations. And it's not just about veterans, it's about the resources that are needed in the rural communities. I can tell you access to mental health care um, outside of the VA is, is a major problem. It's a major concern. Cost of living has prevented a lot of folks from coming down to areas, uh, especially along the coast, um, and providing services. And, and that's, again, not just from a VA perspective. So one of the things that I'm doing, I'm working to build vet slash community cafes in rural communities. And it'd just be once monthly where we bring together a forum, provide a healthy meal, and have a mini resource fair, if you will. And most importantly, conversation, allowing folks to talk about common struggles and build resources from there. Um, I've been doing a lot of work around Florence, Coos, uh, around Roseburg, believe it or not, and down into uh, Myrtle Point and um, uh, you know Riddle and those kinds of areas. Uh, and I think that one of the things that stands out is that we really need to work on sort of supporting the resources we do have in the smaller towns. One of the ways I've done that is I'll always reach out and find the mobile crisis teams and figure out who is involved in crisis response. Because from our level at VA, we use 988, just like everybody in option one, but then the case management and follow up a lot of times uh, can be cumbersome and it really helps to have localized contacts. So without saying too much, uh, we have vet networks in both Lane and Douglas counties. And if anybody's interested in participating in those forums, please do contact me. My information is in the chat. Uh, and I'll be happy to get you included into that. Or if you want to be part of the vet cafes, first one I'm going to start is in Eugene, just because the resources are there. And we're going to spread out from there. Um, one of the things is sharing of information. Uh, we've got to create MOUs, obviously, at the federal levels, but if we go at a community level, we can build a community calendar, and that involves building that peer support network that's so important. So that's the idea behind creating some of the cafes. There's an upstart alliance out of Bend. Bend gets a lot of attention uh, called the Oregon Veteran Alliance that's started up and being manned by Steve Schneider and Darren Golden. And um, we're working to sort of be more transparent and building calendars to disseminate community-wide on trainings, services, availability of not just veteran functions, but community functions as well. So I know I've said a lot, but the, the idea of the rural care, uh, the challenges I see are primarily with aging, transportation, and just the overall cost of living. And so being able to set up forums where people can have access to just basic needs, I think has been extremely beneficial. And I saw that, especially during the uh, past couple of years when we had the COVID, the COVID pandemic and the work that small programs like Meals on Wheels, um, Goodwills and places like that did locally in those small towns across Oregon, because I did a lot of outreach. I had three outposts I established because vets weren't able to get in and get care. So we went to them. Um, and that was in Reedsport, Florence and North Bend. And so just a lot of the work that we did there centered around fulfilling basic needs and building coalitions in the communities that were able to do that. So that's all I wanted to say. And I got a bunch of stuff in the chat. Great. Thank you. I know there's some excitement around community cafes um, and not to <laughs> spotlight you, Tiffany, but if you do want to share about your work in Elkton, I think this would be a great opportunity. Anyone else who has anything you want to share going off of what William mentioned um, or other resources that you want to share in the group? I'll share out Angel Flight West. Awesome. Yeah, Jen, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I know I've connected with a good amount of you guys, so it's great to see your names on here. Um, my name is Jen Cooper. I work for Angel Flight West. We serve the 12 Western states, and we have thousands of volunteer pilots that fly people in need. So if you have anyone that needs access to healthcare, or if um, someone needs domestic violence relocation, human trafficking relocation, um, getting families to people in need. So 
who have someone in the hospital in Portland and the family is in Eastern Oregon. We want to get family to them at their bedside. We do that. We do all sorts of things and it's all completely free. Um, we can pick you up in your local municipal airport, fly you to your destination, and we even have ground support that we call Earth Angels that will pick you up from the municipal airport, take you to the hospital, take you to your hotel, whatever your final destination is. I'm actually going to be doing an Earth Angel mission tomorrow, picking up someone from University of Washington Hospital and taking them up to uh, Payne Field in Everett. As I live in Washington. so. Please connect with me. I'll drop my email in the chat if you want to learn more. Um, my job is to do outreach and make sure everyone knows about it so we can help more people. So, okay. awesome. Thank you, Jen. That's amazing. Um, and just as a reminder, and also maybe an incentive to share out about your programs, I'll be, I'm compiling what folks are saying and we'll be. Sending it out after. So if you um, share about your program, it'll be amplified um, after in the emails out so folks can do more research and learn more. Anyone else want to share about how? About your resources or how maybe you want to um, build off of this. Oh, yeah, we have a hand Cindy. Hi, Cindy Hammond with WorkSource Oregon. Um, I was in the Oregon Center for Nursing Huddle and they shared the information about this meeting. So I thought I'd kind of check in and see what it was about. I uh, focus on the healthcare sector. So I like to have resources for my employers um, that I work with. Uh, at WorkSource, we help people find jobs. Um, and based on uh, their needs and eligibility, uh, we can do um, help them like obtain training. Uh, I like to uh, encourage people to go into healthcare because um, of the need, and it's a career, uh, definitely a good career path where there will probably always be a need. Um, and so we have people that work with that kind, um, with that population, job seekers. Anyone that wants help with the work search is encouraged to come in. Um, and then I work with businesses, and like I said, specifically, well, all businesses, but um, healthcare sector businesses too. So we offer all of our services are provided at no cost, um, um, but we can help with recruitment and um, connecting employers with um, maybe on the job training opportunities uh, and uh, other kind of training opportunities. Our services um, vary statewide, uh, kind of based on the workforce investment board in the area and what they have funding for. So um, I'm happy to uh, kind of provide that as a, a resource. And if anybody wants a connection in a specific area across the state, uh, happy to give that information out. I cover Marion, Polk, Lynn, and Yamhill counties. Um, and right now we had just started, well, probably 18 months ago, a behavioral health consortium for kind of trying to solve that problem on getting services to people. But um, you have a lot of resources on your list and I was very excited to like to read them uh, on the slides and uh, thought, wow, this is great. So I'm glad I happened into the meeting and I hope you find my information valuable. Definitely. Thank you, Cindy. Would you mind putting, if you haven't already, um, your email into the chat so folks can follow up with you? That would be great. Anyone else want to share out? Or enter something into the chat? And I can read it out if you want to do that as well. Hey, Stefa, this is Madison. Um, figured I would chime in and just give a brief overview of our program. So 
I'm Madison Reisman. I'm with Oregon Coalition of Local Health Officials, or CLO, and I'm the program manager for Healthy Rural Oregon, which Stefa mentioned on one of her slides. Um, we focus on workforce development for community health workers and other traditional health worker types, as well as community paramedics um, as, and base EMT and paramedic training as well. Um, again, specifically in rural Oregon. We're in the third year of our grant now, so we're focusing a little less on what we've done in the previous two years, which was scholarships and wraparound funding, um, and are focusing a little bit more on, you know, really bolstering those partnerships with other groups that are working in this space, as well as looking at some sustainable funding and policy initiatives we can do to kind of long term um, ensure that folks that we've trained in these in these programs have um, career progression. Uh, livable wages, things like that. So if you're interested in talking with us more about what we've got going, or if you have something going in that traditional health worker or community paramedicine space, um, we'd love to chat with you just a little bit more about what you're doing and see if there's opportunities where we have overlap and can potentially collaborate. I will say too that we have um, scholarship funding still available in a couple of different categories, particularly community health workers, EMTs, paramedics, community paramedics, um, so if that's something you're interested in, please reach out. I'll throw my email in the chat. Um, you can also email me if you want to be added to our monthly distribution list. We send a newsletter with um, additional resources, upcoming trainings, uh, and just announcements about other things that we have going on and um, things that we're looking for partners on. So um, yeah, feel free to get in touch and um, I'd love to connect over email or Zoom or uh, whatever. So thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Madison. I put the link to the Healthy Rural Oregon um, page in the chat, but definitely add your email and any other info too. <clears throat> other folks you want to share? Hi, my name is Karen, and I am a community health worker. I also work at the Lake Health District um, Clinic and Hospital. But I have been looking at some of these names along here <clears throat> on the on the site. And I really didn't want to put somebody on the spot, but it says Craig Leeds and it says a youth line. Um, I'd kind of like to know more about what 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 his um, organization is. Um, if he would just give us a little bit of details, because we have a lot of youth that really need a lot of assistance and we are so far away. I thought maybe he could give some insight on what he does. Awesome. Uh Hi there, thanks so much, Madison. I really appreciate the uh, invitation to share a little bit more. So Youthline is a peer-to-peer -peer help support and crisis line for youth ages 10 to 24. Um, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific every day of the year, we have teen and young adult volunteers and interns who answer calls, texts, and chats from other um, Our motto is no problem is too big or too small. And so if a youth is struggling, uh, they can reach out to us and they can talk to one with one of our volunteers. Um, we serve youth all over the country. There's no, you know, location restriction on folks who can reach out to us. Uh, and so we invite yeah, providers who work with youth to let them know about us. Uh, we do have free promotional materials on our website and I can drop the link in the chat uh, after I'm done chatting. Um, but we welcome anyone who works with youth to order those materials. We have stickers, brochures, um, cards for backpacks and wallets, wristbands that are really popular among middle schoolers. Uh, and we invite you to give all of those materials to the youth with whom you work so they can know about Youthline if they're struggling. Um, you know, talking to a trusted adult is always a really good thing for youth who are struggling with their mental health, but they may be more willing to chat with another youth first. And so, uh, we have adult clinicians who are in the room, of course, with our volunteers and interns, but really the first responders are other youth. Um, and we think that that, you know, is a, a, a magic formula for getting youth to reach out when they're struggling. That's awesome. Thank you, Craig. Um, mm -hmm. I would love if you could put the, yeah, the website and your email maybe in the chat. Yeah, happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Craig. I appreciate it. Who else wants to share out? All 
anyone want to recommend a resource um, that you've found to be really valuable in your work that you'd like to share about? Okay, well, that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm excited to compile all of this and add it um, to the resource document um, on, you know, that we're going to share out after. So, if you want to add anything, um, you can email me right after this, too, if you want to add something that you um, didn't share out or put in the chat, and I will add it. So, just want to say thank you all for coming. Thank you for participating. Um, I, it's really great to see uh, all of you. So, sorry to interrupt, but can I oh, ask yeah. a quick question real fast? Sure. I, I didn't want to take up everybody's time, but I do have a uh, question. I'm, I'm Brian Mayo with the Oregon State Pharmacy Association, and we set up a 501c3 uh, about a year and a half ago that's called the Pharmacy Foundation of Oregon. And just a quick background, Oregon has the second worst access to uh, pharmacy services in the country after Alaska. And what we're trying to do with our foundation is get pharmacy lockers in uh, in the communities that are designated by OHA as critical access pharmacies. And so I was just wondering if you could recommend, I'm the only person uh, with the organization, so I'm wondering if you could just kind of maybe give me a couple of quick uh, places and resources that I should look at for grant funding, um, if you have any off the top of your head or what that would actually uh, look like, just so, I mean, this this was fantastic and there's a lot of information here, but I'm also like, oh, this is a little overwhelming. So, totally. but it's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, and I would love to connect offline with you too, um, just because okay. I don't know that I like really think about it, but does anyone have any suggestions? For Brian, that you can think of off the top of your head right now. Sleeping I missed what kind of funding you need. Um, what, what we're trying to do is get uh, grants on on. to lease is, is uh, pharmacy lockers and put them oh. in uh, communities and work in partnership with critical access pharmacies because whether they're okay. reduced, um, right. so, um, reduced hours or don't have the services can... available. Uh, in some of the, uh, the the communities across Oregon that uh, need service, uh, we want to be able to put a pharmacy locker there and then work with the the local pharmacy to um, manage it and make it more accessible for the patients. Awesome, thank you, Brian. Putting a band aid over the situation. Hey, Brian, um, I don't know if you've worked or talked with the Roundhouse Foundation at all, but I know they recently. I have, yeah. Okay, yeah, they put out like a little, it wasn't a white paper, but it was a study of sorts about Oregon rural pharmacy landscape and everything. So I know they're somewhat invested in that space and could be a good partner to connect with. So I'm glad you have. Yeah, they, they've been fantastic and, and uh, a great partner of ours. And yeah, basically we want to do the same thing that they did with Red Cross Pharmacy. We're doing one in uh, Again, we don't Fossil, have Oregon a as well, team, so you uh, that's can... following that same, that same model. Awesome, great. Thank you. And Brian, would you mind putting? Oh, yeah, you can put it in the chat. Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome. Does anyone else want to pitch in? Does anyone else want to take a minute to share out or offer anything? Any insights? Awesome. Okay. Well, I'll let you all um, let you all go. Thank you again for being here. Um, it's great to connect and thank you so much for participating and sharing your knowledge and resources. I really appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thank you.